KMSU? Yes, Dustin. Yes, this is Dustin. Yeah, it's Jan Terry from Chicago. Jan, how you doing? Okay, how you doing? I am excellent. Thanks for calling us today. No problem. I'm here with my co-host, Tun. Hey, Jan, how hey, are you? Okay. Good. Well, we just have a few questions for you. Sure. Okay, well, we'll ask you first, um, when did you realize that you wanted to be a musician? Oh, probably when I was um, like five years old after I seen um, the Beatles and, oh, yep, probably back when I was a kid. I wanted to do that, make people happy. Did you, as a kid then, start like performing around even for your family or how how did that all end up with you, you know, starting to make your own stuff and releasing things? Well, when like um in kindergarten you used to have um you used to have um it was on Fridays and it was show and tell. I used to bring my lute guitar and I used to sing a, a Beatles song and an Elvis song to the kids and then they <laughs> Then my teacher used to take me to the other um, classes, and I used to perform for them, too. Awesome. So then um, you started releasing your own albums. You had a couple in the 90s. How did how did that come about? Well, I was going as a songwriter and for, for the first album, but some record companies wanted to see what else you could write. So then I released the second album, and they said that that's unheard of because this second album was going to, the high risk was going to be songs that each song could go to different radio stations and they said that's unheard of you can't do that you have to have one album going to a particular market and i was trying to show my versatility of um writing different songs so i started i started my own record label back in 92 and then i just said well i'll just re- try and release my stuff myself and not listen to the record companies. So um, do you write all the all, your music, too, or just the lyrics, or how does that work? I write the lyrics, and I have the... I'm not that good at the music, but I have the, mu- I like, I have the music in my head, and then I, I, um, I can play a little bit of guitar, but I'm not a guitar player, so then I just kind of like... I used to tell my engineer, Jerry, how, how I wanted the music to go when he... Kind of like transport it for me. Hmm. Okay. And then how how did you, uh, was it just kind of natural progression to start like making the music videos and stuff? Well, that's another thing. The um, the record labels claim that you need to put music videos out. And I hooked up with Mike and I just started cranking up the, the music videos. Because like, I had, um, I went to Columbia College, so I had film and TV production behind me, so I just, I knew there was an inexpensive way to do the music videos other than spending millions of dollars doing it, so that's why mine's more realistic, because it's out in the outlets, except for um, Get Down Goblin, and I had to research different um, places to find a castle, and I, and this church happened to be a an old castle, so that's how I did that. And then I called around for different um, haunted houses, and this guy said that he um, it was out almost by Iowa. And I went to the limo the whole day, and I, I dragged everybody with me, and I drove in the limo all over the place. Awesome. Would you say that was your favorite then, Get Down Goblin? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, because it was... I will most likely say yes, get down, Goblin. Plus, too, I, um, you know, everybody's given the Halloween such a bad rap where they say that the witches and the goblins and the monsters are mean and ugly. But it's like, that's their impression. Maybe they, maybe these these people are cool. Maybe the goblin's cute, is a cute little guy. And my dogs at the time were Shih Tzus. And when they don't get their hair cut, they look like a little Ewoks. And I'm like, well, maybe a goblin looks like a little Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, your videos now, they're all over YouTube and, you know, various places on the Internet. And 
Are you surprised that they've become so popular now, so many years after you made them? Yes. Um, well, one thing is good that YouTube, but I didn't like when um, somebody said for losing you, it's the most um, awful um, music video. Because WGN and people say it's not, they seem worse. Sure, I mean, I think you just got to take that stuff with a grain of salt. There's always going to be somebody hating somebody on right. YouTube. Yeah, there'll be somebody, there'll be, it, that's their opinion. The person next to you might like it. And that's why doing my shows, I try to do songs for, um, like maybe you like country and maybe the, the your partner next to you likes rock and roll. So I, probably, I try to stick a little country in there and I try to stick a little rock and roll. So the the show is enjoyable, you know. So I try to please everybody. Yeah. Like Donnie and Marie, I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> I'm more town than myself. Definitely. And I know Elvis used to throw out scarves during his um, concerts. And Metallica, if you ever seen them play live, um, throw, threw out guitar picks. So I threw out Milky Way candy bars. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> So would you well, say good. that? I got you cracking up. Yeah, huh? well, is a Jan Terry live show is? Would you say that's kind of like Metallica and Elvis combined, <laughs> maybe? Uh, yeah, something like that. I mean, you know, well, Journey to Mars was. I started to write Journey to Mars back in um, in high school, but I never finished it. And that was a. I know you guys are kind of young, but there was a band called Led Zeppelin, so I started to write it like Led Zeppelin, and. Then I started listening to Metallica, and then I finished it with with uh, Metallica. But in the recording studio of the day, I was in a silly mood, so I started to sing like Axl Rose of, of Guns N' Roses, <laughs> and that's the soundtrack. That's the voice track that that the engineer kept because I redid the song, and instead of him erasing that song, that track, he kept that one. <laughs> so, nice. so Journey to Mars is. Let's up in Metallica and Guns N' Roses. So. There you go. All rolled into one. All rolled into one. Well, uh, what is your relationship with Marilyn Manson? We read that you played some shows with him at some point. Are you guys friends? Or Yes. Well, he. Um, what happened was he was out promoting his, uh, his, his book. You know, he had his, an autobiography book out or something. And he was at Tower Records in Bloomingdale, Illinois, and my friends put together a little press kit for him and gave it to him. And we didn't hear anything from him except the the week before um, Labor Day weekend. He His people were looking for me because they wanted me to perform for Rose McGovern's birthday party. I was his, I was his uh, surprise for her. Okay. Huh. And then I did a good job, and I guess he liked it. And uh, I was already going to be a guest at his concert when he performed in in October at um, the Uruguayan Ballroom. But two days before, Tony called me and he says, Manson wants you to do him a favor. Will you open for him? <laughs> I'm like, sure. So, yeah, that's uh, quite the opportunity, I'm sure, to... Get on the bigger stage. I know. Stage uh, and they said that the the bands killed to to do that. They try to uh, booking agents try to offer them money, and they were like, "Where did this kid come from?" <laughs> and then I'm also in his. Um, he's got a documentary called "Guys Not in the TV." Okay. It came out back in like ninety ninety eight ninety nine, and I was with I'm with them. I'm with, I've got a little piece in that with him. So. Hmm, cool. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, then I, I performed a couple of times um, when he was done performing. He, he, for him to unwind, and I'll perform for him. So. Well, is it true there's a documentary about you that they're making now? I thought we read that somewhere. Yes, yes. Um, my um, my filmmaker, Deeran, is... Um, he, him and his wife started it back in the 90s, and they never finished it, so now he wants to finish it. Same as, too, is um, he's hoping next year he'll be ready for that, um, some kind of a music fest in 
Austin, Texas. He's trying to get it ready for next year for that. Same time, he's, um, he's um, <clears throat> helping me do uh, my uh, autobiography book. So that should be coming out next year, too. Wow. So it sounds like you got uh, a lot of projects in the works. Yes, and I just um, I just came across my two children's book, and I'm trying to get those released. The, so cool, staying busy. And, yep, and to get the third album released. So. Tell us a little bit about that. You have a new album come up next. Is it next year? Or? Um, it's it's I did it back in 1997, so it's it's just. Um, I'm trying to get it released this year. You know, if I, I might have to just put it on iTunes until I can get the money financed to get it printed up in the CDs because I know how I want it. Okay. And that's it, the studios down in Nashville are completely different than the ones here in Chicago. People down there are a little bit more laid back and they have more of that country feel. So. That's what the third album he has, <clears throat> more of that country field. I did it at Soundstage in Nashville. It's one of the best recording uh, studios down there. Yeah, wow. So the whole third album is, is mostly a country album. Um, yeah, except that um, I've got Get Down Goblin, Rock and Roll Santa on there, and that new Christmas song, Excuse My Christmas. So. Awesome. Well, we're definitely looking forward to that. Yep, and I'm supposed to be going to California. We'll do a couple of shows out there. And Sir Denny's coming with me, the <laughs> dog. Excellent. Awesome. And it's true. Uh, do you know Cynthia Plastercaster? Yeah, yep. Okay, well, it's true. She is going to do um, put my boobs in her um, art collection. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so- I just talked to her. She's um, going to do it sometime this month. <laughs> awesome. So, so will we be able to purchase molds maybe or is this just a one time thing? This is a one time thing. <laughs> okay, okay. I asked her, I said, Do I have to get these insured with Lord of London's? And she goes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's great. Anything else? Um, no, I think that should be good, Jan. Thanks a lot for talking with us today. No problem. Anytime. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.